my name is Jenny Ivans. I'm a local artist and writer, and I'm here with your Wednesday delivery of Arts and Culture as part of Cardinia Shire Council's Alive with Creativity digital program. You can find out more about the program and see upcoming events online at www.cardinia.vic.gov.au forward slash alive with creativity. Wednesdays are all about workshops. So every Wednesday there will be an art workshop for you to watch and participate in. Today we're going to be working wet on wet. So what does wet on wet mean? We're going to use, be using wet paper and putting uh, food dyes or even coffee on top to make pages that look something like, well, let me show you. We all know tea stains. If you've ever, I don't know if it's only artists who do this, take the tea out of the tea bags, but tea does stain. You'll see it in your teacup too. But we can then put other uh, dyes on top. These have been done with food dyes on all different sorts of paper and you can make different marks. For this project, you can use any paper that you've got that's not shiny. Uh, you can even just use ordinary copy paper from the computer. And we're going to do things like this. It makes mark with a paper clip. Then we've got some like that with leaves. That part was made with another piece of paper over the top. Butterfly. This is a thicker paper that I had from Officeworks. It's, I think, 120 GSM. Copy paper is 180. But just use any scrap papers that you have around the house. You might have some papers with squares. These little bits are good too because they will give marks on the other page If you because I'm going to be overlapping them. And they'll leave marks like this. You could use, actually let's move this aside a little bit, you could use envelopes, you could even make little business cards or gift cards that go on presents. They look quite pretty. You could use strips of paper that you could make into a bookmark. You can leave them as they are or you might want to work into them with a pen or something else. You can use lined paper, that's quite okay. Imagine if you handed in your homework on a page like this. What I'm going to use the papers for is to make a scrap journal, the hand-bound journal. There will be pockets in the journal and I might put in something like this. This is just a, a list of things I had to do for a project. So if my journal is going to be filled on a theme, I will put in paraphernalia that relates to that theme. There's another one of the paper clips, a leaf. Here, I've used a lot of, lot of different food colorings, different colors, but you may prefer something that's got a slightly different tone to it, more natural look, in which case you'd go for just the tea or tea and coffee, and then a little splattering of one color. I made these others in advance because I knew that it takes a while for them to dry. So wherever you're going to set up to do the job today, make sure that you have, uh, you're have you not going to want to use that space in the next few hours or even overnight. You can use paper that already has a picture printed on it. I print out my mind drawings before I frame them and I want to check that the, I've got a good quality copy of it because I sell them as prints. Uh, in my red bubble store. Because my artwork is toured, I can't sell the pictures on the tour. If you tear a piece of paper, because a thinner paper may tear when you're handling it, the secret is not to handle it when it's very wet. But if that does happen, don't worry, you could still use the other part of it, or you can even sew paper. I don't know if you've ever done that. That adds some interesting effects too. You could dye pictures that your children have given you. Add them a little bit of a different dimension. These are some very old ones from my grandchildren and they were small. Oh, that picture there I showed you before, this was what gave you the jagged edge. And you'll see where the paper's torn, it picks up the dye or the uh, tea stain differently to where it hasn't been torn. And then these, so it's just paper that I got from a roll of paper at Ikea. 
and I've torn it into smaller pieces. This mark here is produced by a sleeve protector for your paper, which is one of the optional things on the list of things to, um, to bring for the workshop if you want to do it yourself. You see, that'll leave a mark too. You're going to need a bit of space. Having said that, I'm being very organised. A bit of space for laying out the paper. You want to make sure you're using a waterproof surface. So I'll move these out the way too. So I'm using a craft table, but because there's a join in the table folds, I've put a plastic tablecloth. Just use whatever you've got at home. This was actually a party tablecloth with fairies on it, which I was going to use for my Fairies Without Wings exhibition in March, but of course that was cancelled and we've brought things online. And in a way, you're very lucky because that's why I'm doing this one online now. It was going to be part of my workshops. The so you'll need, you can use your kitchen bench, but be aware that you won't be cooking at it for a few hours afterwards. A towel that absorbs some of the water. You can use, but you probably wouldn't have enough of them unless you're only doing a couple of sheets of paper, a rack. If you use the rack, it's going to give you a pattern of its own as well. But basically, I just use the towel. That's perfectly fine. And you'll need a container that's bigger than the pieces of paper you're going to dye. This is just an old meat tray that's been very thoroughly cleaned and recycled. You could use something like this, which is uh, the lid that came with some a tray of food for an event that I had, probably another art uh, exhibition opening. You may just have a tray in your kitchen. I've put plastic over this because I know I'm using dyes and they might stain as a melamine tray, but you can see it's got a bit of depth to it. So it doesn't have to be a deep container. You could use a plastic tub and that will work too, or the lid of a plastic tub if it's got enough of a groove around it. Just be careful to be aware that you will need to empty the tray afterwards. I had a little bit of a mishap yesterday when I was doing that because the plastic had uh, sticky stuff underneath and it stuck to the tablecloth. Good idea to have an old tea towel and definitely some sponges. Gloves on your hands or you're going to finish up with dirty hands. I might just get started now with putting some in. So, let's start. Oh, okay. I'll move that one aside. The other thing that you'll need, so having said I'll get started, the other thing you'll need is things to put on the paper. So I've used weeds, leaves. This one's actually a piece of blackberry, I think. That little, when a blackberry plant came through, I didn't want it growing in my garden, so I pulled it out, but it looked quite pretty. So I have um, pressed that one. They don't have to be pressed items. They can be fresh, just as long as they're flat. These, I've, being an artist, I think most artists do this, maybe not. I tend to press flowers and leaves pretty much whenever I find them. They look gorgeous. I'm tempted, I'll go and, um, I'll go and press them but I also have some that I just pressed. But I'll show you in a moment, I think might be the easiest way. Clover, I four leaf clover, three leaf clover, both, either. I'll pour the tea in. I don't need it too deep, but I'm just doing that one for now. I'll put the pot out the side. It's good to be set up first. Um, and these are some of the tools I'm going to use. Different things that we can use apart from the flowers. We'll get to that in a moment. I've got paint brushes. This is just a very cheap children's one that you would have seen in a paint set with who knows what, just really, very basic. It's quite firm. You can use a softer one. I've got a toothbrush too, we'll get to that later. And an old paintbrush that was used for painting around the house. Because Oh, actually, <laughs> and that's a dirty one. Um, but you dob, I'll show you, dob the paint on that way. 
The reason I'm, I have wet things is because yesterday I made the first run of this video and it didn't quite go to plan. I got to the end of the one hour and discovered uh, the film when I uploaded it to the computer it broke up so I think I had it set on the wrong setting still did 4k which probably doesn't concern you unless you're making videos so for any other artists who are following because we're going to have every Wednesday another artist making art and showing you something that you can do with the arts I'm just putting these are envelopes I thought I might make a set of envelopes, that might be nice. So I'm making sure that the tea goes over all the surfaces of each one, which is why I'm putting them in individually, not the whole stack all at once. There we go. Two more. And I'll lay those out first. Oh, this is actually also a, a better quality paper. It's a bit thicker. It's about 225 GSM. If you don't know what GSM is, um, it's just a measure that you use for paper. But don't worry about it. If you've just got scrap paper around the house, that's perfectly fine. I mean, I'd have no idea how many GSM would be in this, for example. And I know this one is very thin. So when I use that, I need to have to lift it out carefully. In fact, I'm not going to put another one on top of it. I'll start with that one. So when you pop them in the tea, and the tea can be um, not scalding hot. You don't want to get burnt. Mine is cold, actually, but you can have warm, which I think probably works better, but cold will work. And tea gives you a nice brown stain. Um, a lighter colour, though, than coffee. I do have some coffee there, which I'll also use to show you. Oh, it just occurred to me. What are these envelopes? Oh, there's a tab that you pull off. It may affect whether the envelopes are able to be stuck closed or not. So I'm going to put them out neatly first. One by one. And I've got my little helper there, Jasmine. My yeah. granddaughter's helping me. Because uh, during COVID-19, we all pitch in together and you use what you've got. Can you please take this tray of leaves away for me so I've got a bit more room for laying out the paper, please? Sure. Thank you. You may know Jasmine if you've been watching Mandala Mondays on Facebook. We uh, make a Monday, a Mandala, we make a Mandala every Monday uh, when Jazz is here. Sometimes she's at her mum's or at school, but of course now we're back to homeschooling, so I think she'll be joining me again tomorrow. Three o'clock, Mandela Monday's Facebook group, and you're most welcome to join. It's open to everybody. And actually, I'll tell you about another project too that's happening. Cardinia Council have been fantastic, actually, with um, giving us opportunities to respond to COVID-19 with the arts and uh, so they've given out a COVID-19 arts response grant to, I can't remember how many artists, a few, but we've all got different projects that we're doing. Mine is, and I don't need you again, Jess, because I just realised I've got wet as anything hands, and I want to show the uh, label that says what it is. Could you please hand, it's called A Part Together, and what I'm doing so it's just over there, there are some cards that I've made with writing on. Do you see those? Just there. If you could pick up a part together and hold that down here. Yep. So it's called A Part Together and it's a Facebook group where I'm I did communi sorry, communicating with the community. People can join and we're discussing your experience of COVID-19 in isolation, um, uh, sorry, Cardinia Shy in is isolation. And what I'm doing is I'm making a game board of Cardinia based on the map of Cardinia. I'm going to need you to pass another one too. If you lift up the whole pile. And 
the one, one underneath there. Yep, if you could hold that one up down here because the camera's down there, that's it. So I'm going to get people to draw pictures of things from their experience, things like things, what you might have eaten while you're on in isolation, how you kept in touch with other people, activities you did. Uh, they, the list will be in the Facebook group. It was also in the Gazette a little while ago. Uh, there will be mention of it, or has been mention of it. But um, take a look and I should also put it on my, my, my website, shouldn't I? Mydrawing.net. Um, anyway, there'll be a list of things. Particularly, I would like to see people drawing features of your own community. So no matter where you live in the shower, Shire, especially where you live in the Shire, I would love you to um, produce a drawing or even just take a photo if you don't want to draw of different things in your community and send it there. Or there's another one here with my email address, jenny at minddrawing.net. No, not that one. <laughs> you have so many I know. No. Maybe it's not there, but anyway. Um, We'll show you in a moment. I think I wrote it on a piece of paper, but maybe I didn't put it there. Anyway, take a look because what we're at the stage now where Is we're that? just it's just starting to. That's the one. Oh, art at minddrawing.net. You sent it to that one. Yep. Yeah. Um, actually, before I put this one down, while I've got you, Jazz, do you want to put a glove on? And what? you can help me with the this next stage. Thank you. So we're going to decorate the envelopes with leaves. I'm going to use some little ones that I've found. You can just put them randomly or you can decide where you'd like to put it. That one would have a stamp there, so I don't think I want to put it where the stamp's going to go. Uh, think about leaving space for where you would be writing on the envelope. You can just use one glove if you like, Jess. Okay, so, and then you can design some business cards too, or they can, they be, can be used as bookmarks. And the idea is just press it down flat. It's actually strange using gloves. I normally do use my hands, but then they get dyed with the tea. So I want to plait it down flat, and then you'll see the tea tends to form around it. Oh, actually, that was the one I was saving for a big one, though. I mean, I've got a special piece of paper for that, so I should have said, sorry. But any of the others. There's a big one here. That one probably is not going to be as effective because the ink will, the tea will form around the outside of it. But just to show you how it works, I'll stick it there and it can be in the, um, I'll take photos afterwards and post them. Maybe in the comments if I can on councils, because this is going to be on council's YouTube channel. If not, I'll place it on the council arts page. Oh, I've caught your hair. Sorry. Now, do you see there's a four-leaf clover? No, it's a three-leaf clover. We won't do the clovers yet. I was thinking how much fun would it be to do one with lots of clover and then one four-leaf clover amongst them. A lot of the weeds I've found, I've just found them growing when I've been on a walk or even going down to the post office. A few more smaller ones. So where you've got them overlapped like that, Jasmine, they look pretty as leaves, but what you'll find is that'll make a very big blobby bit. So it might be better to put that on a separate one, okay? And then you'll be able to see each individual part of the leaf. Also think about if you're going to be writing on the card where you might write, on the envelope where you might write. Keep the other big one aside too. The, if you've got things that you've pressed and you think it's a bit too dry, you might just leave it at that, I think. Or maybe one or two for the, the little ones at the end there. Just one on each, okay? But if you find your foliage is too dry because you've had it pressed for a while and it's not actually sitting flat, you can soak it in a little bit of water and it'll soften again. So it's your choice. You can either put them just randomly, let them fall where they go, or you can uh, make a design of how you'd like to see 
the card look when it's finished. Is it not cooperating? Yeah, it's good enough. If you find it's not actually sticking, you can just get a little bit of water and I need put to some stick for a second. Yeah. Okay, we might just leave it at that. And I'm going to dip some more paper in. I've got some more paper in here. This paper is now very wet, so I have to be careful and pick it up from the sides. Well, that's actually two sheets. I'm going to lift the two together though because I think it's going to tear otherwise. And I'm just going to put them on top. Where the paper overlaps, you'll find it will leave uh, lines along the edges. You have now, this one's been in soak for a while. This is the art paper that was thicker. If you use a heavier quality paper, you're going to have to leave it soaking for a bit longer. Let's put the blackberry on that one. Uh, we do it as a feature in the middle? Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm doing is pressing it down and you'll see it'll, the colour will come around the edges of it. Okay. We might use a little bit of colour. Now, yesterday when I did this, I found I've recycled a container of, from hand sanitizer. No, the bench sanitizer. But oh, look what happened. See, <laughs> wet on wet. Don't spray, spray. Don't spray. We're in their lounge room. <laughs> I was going to drip it. Oh, dripping it's okay. Yeah, but don't spray it. Yeah, um, you can't even just put it on there. If you've got a spray bottle that works, you get a very nice effect. It's but not brilliant. I, yeah, I did that on purpose because I found, I can't believe I'm doing this in the lounge room. This is where we do Mandela Mondays, always live from the lounge. And, uh, oh, that's the other thing too. Make sure your towel's an old towel. Most of the things you use are likely to get a bit soiled by this. Okay, I'm gonna take that one away and I'll show you. Things. And here, I'll take those off. I'm going to pick up one of the paintbrushes, Jasper. Yeah. Oh, where would we put those? Over here. So I have a small paintbrush. Yes, find it. And this is what I had the uh, other tub resting on. This red food colouring has actually been diluted. You can see wet on wet, it just moves around. If you've got something, I don't think you can see this one at the front. It's a bit hard to test how far that went. Let's do it on this one. So you can put the, just dab it on the side of the brush to let the colour out and push down. If you've got gloves on, you can push down with your fingers to make sure that the plant is, the, is sitting hard against the paper. Or you can use the wider brush this one, as we remember, has blue on it. I'm going to mix it down here with the, the reds. You can even dip it into the tea and just put more tea on. And with whatever colour you've got on there is going to mix with it too. You can put the colours randomly. Or would you like to use this one for a bit, Jess? Get a lot of colour at once. You're happy with what you've got? Good. I'm happy to share. Now, what if you don't have a paintbrush and you want to put this down? I have an answer for you too. Jasmine, can you take this please? Very carefully over the table only. That was there for you in the lounge. And if you don't have a paintbrush, I have taken a piece of paper, folded it, and cut little bits at the end of it. May I borrow your colour, please? It will soak up the colour. And then when I put it down, see it does the same thing, it will distribute the colour a bit. What about the toothbrush? Now the toothbrush, I was going to leave that one till the end actually. Oh, sorry. It's going to be very sp spray. I'll do that with the blue, shall I? Yeah. Did you want to do anything else there? No. no? Um, what about this paintbrush? Keep it here with the red. It's very much at the point of you have to stop and think before you put something down somewhere. To think about where is it going to go? Is it going to stain something? The 
the glue and the toothbrush. So tip your dye. This one is food colouring that's just straight. Do you want to get the food colouring containers and we'll show people? There's some here, but then there's the other packet too. We have two packets of it though, because um, we ran out of yellow in one of them. Yeah, that's okay. You can open those and show them. So they're just the normal mini for trying ones. Can you take one out? Yeah. And so the yeah, other's colour we have to get. So I'll show the yellow. Do the face as well, but it's my size. And then the others are just queen food colourings that we've got over the years. They come in, well, the bottle's probably changed. This one's even years. queen food colouring too. That is two, yeah. Buy it in the supermarket. No, they're all queen food colouring. In the cake decorating oil. Oh, now there's something else. Now let's do this first. <laughs> so I've got the blue on here. Definitely with a paintbrush. Definitely being aware of what's around you. You can do little flecks like this. I am in the house, so I don't want to do it near other things if you're worried about it you want to do that one okay wait a second before you do that what you can do is put something up to protect what's behind the thing you're spraying how did that go for you yep that works nicely sometimes it's nice to just have a tiny bit okay side if you touch it, it's going to blob, which might be the effect you're after. You can't even just, you know, <laughs> if you haven't got a brush and you don't want to use the paper even, you can just put it on your fingers and blob it. You can also, can we open one of those? Um, where are we? Is that the back? We've got the little teapot here. But beware, when you use a toothbrush, do not use the one that you're going to brush your teeth with. <laughs> Good point. Don't use the one you brush your teeth with. Otherwise, agree. you'll dye your teeth. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not So you can take a tea bag that's already been used and dob it over a bit too. That will wetten things again. Give it more of a tea colour. So blur that one. That just went from a light um, blue and everything to a more of a um, darker one. Like that one's very dry there. You can just leave it to dry. So be aware, it does also affect the colour. If you are not wanting to affect the colour, just want it to go lighter, like not lighter, but more. So some of the other things you things. can. Sorry, Jess. Yes. Yeah. Some of the other things you can do. I've cut out a shape with a cutter of a butterfly, which I'll put. Um, let's put it here. Do you want to take your brush? Are oh, you using the toothbrush? You've got nice messy fingers. <laughs> Do you want to put on some of these on that one? Yep. Dog it down. Hold the outside, the template still. And we're going to leave the template there afterwards. Yeah, the one thing with the templates is you also have to make sure that it's definitely down properly. Otherwise, it will end up with a bit of a different shape. But that's okay, in my opinion. With yep. Me. Okay, let's go back to, I'll put some more paper down now. Would you like to have a go at putting the paper down or watch me do it? Watch you do it. Okay. Oh, just headphones falling off a bit there. Okay. So, as I said, you can use pictures, that are all, um, paper that's already got a print on it. This one's, again, normal computer paper. When I have an art exhibition, I tour my work, as I mentioned before. Um, and I also include lots of interaction. So... There was a, um, that one is a picture that, that can be coloured in. Don't worry too much if you get a wrinkle, but I prefer mine to be straight. But the wrinkles will add some interesting marks too. Uh, yeah, I add things that can be coloured in. I have other sheets of things you can look for within each picture. I usually have some interactive drawings, so the community will add to the drawing and it grows. Can I try putting some in there? Yes, would you like to? Go for it. Which were you? I'm just resting my hands here, so, so I'll move around. I'm going to try it with one layer. Yep. It's good if you could sort of slide it in, Jasmine, although what you're doing now is fixing that because it'll get air bubbles underneath. Let's have a look and see if it did. Also, my container is a little bit bigger, smaller at least than the paper, not by much. 
Now when you're pulling it out, roll it out and take that corner and this one. All right. No white parts, so that worked really well. Pop it down on top of something else. And you can put some leaves on or keep adding paper. Oh, I've got two layers together again. If your layers are sticking together, put them down in the water and try to, or the tea and try to separate them while they're in the tea. If they don't come out at all, don't worry about it. Just do it as two. Oops. My hands are very cold in the gloves. Uh, okay, so we've got a couple more pieces like this. Oh, that looks interesting. So you've added other colours to that. I've just touched with my hands. Well, okay. my gloves. Good. <gasps> did you notice what time we started filming? Um, no. No, neither did I. <laughs> ah, well, we'll see how we go. Yesterday I had the same problem, but it worked out perfectly. This is, do you see the shine on that? This paper is not going to work. So I'll put that one aside. So there's, like, the, the paper is on that works. It's more, the other ones don't work because of the plastic stuff on the top of it. The, well, so. if it's got a strip of plastic down the side, you can still do it. Yeah, but it's more with that one since it's fully covered in it. I need to move around the table. I'm trying to separate them. Do you want to take it from me? Okay. There we go. Try. You can do it. Give it a bit of a drip over the pot and then put it down. No, oh, well, you can do it that way too. That's okay. No hard and fast rules. Now pick up the colour from underneath as well as on top. Let's turn this over. What do I got on the other side here? Ah, oh, this is a piece of ooh, really Whoa. good paper. Whoa. It's going to need a lot more soaking. That one is a, a wash and draw art paint. Yeah. I paper. like how when you put it in the tea, you can see the texture of it. Yeah, but it's too big for the container, so I might need to do half that way. We'll worry about the rest of it in a moment. Let's soak. What are these? The ones that fell out. So... They're again a bit thicker, they're just bits, oh this one's actually card. So well, I don't know how that one's going to go. Don't be afraid to experiment. I feel like it won't though. Yeah. That looks like a nice, if it's already got paint on, you can still do it. Experiments. Exactly. In fact, why don't we put one down that's dry? What do you mean? Don't put the tea on first. Okay, so this is a just a dry piece of paper. Oh, pink. Yeah. Hand painted. So I'm so, going to put it down with the paint up. I'm just going to pat it down. And I think we'll put the cardboard down with it now. One side's shiny, the other side's dull. We'll put the dull side up. And a small piece here. And so I'm just patting it down. I'm going to turn this one around. So when we do the dye next time, I want to keep the colours away from this. I just want to keep to browns at this end, okay? Okay. So I'm going to use coffee yeah. next. Um, we've got quite a few of these. Don't worry if your paper's torn because you can, as I said before, sew it or cut it, fold it. There are things you can do with it. And the actual tears themselves will be interesting. Now, see that one's got, all of these have got a pattern down the side. They will leave a pattern on the paper that's sitting against them. Do you want to get the plastic sleeve too, Jess? Is yeah. your glove good enough? Yeah, I've just given up on this glove. Um, so I want to... There's a green container on the... A plastic bag on the table. There we go. And, on, and that's for rubbish. Oh, I just remembered. Have you got a dry hand? Yes, sir. Could you please move that light closer to here? <laughs> You're supposed to have one leg sitting on the pile of books. Up, up, that's it. And then it lights up the table a bit more. Okay. And would you take the paper clip off here? Excellent. So the stuff like paper clips, you can also use for that. Yeah, I was just using it to hold. You could actually. Do you want to use the paper clips? Yeah. Put them down on some of these. You've got the list of it. Not that one though, because that's not flat. What we're looking for is flat things. Where's the tray that we had? This one. Let's take the food colouring away, and you can pick up the tray. Yeah, so this is the tray, which you can probably already see. Oh, I'll remove ah, this one. Yep. So yeah, this is the tray. There's um, like um, these little po a little pocket sort of thing. Which is a hessian. So that was one of the things that I mentioned, hessian. It's a little pocket sort of 
The camera's down here, sweetheart. Sorry. That's okay. Let's put it down here and we'll get a bit of the hessian effect on both of those. And is there a sheet soaking at the moment? No? Okay. I'll add another one so that we can put that over the top. Um, on this tray, there's like these loom bands. Um, there's these paper clips sort of there. So put some of those down on the pages, pen. just not on that one, okay? It's the only one not to put it on. Yep, so we have this pen to experiment with. Because that's what this is about, experimenting. So I'm going to put it right there to see if that will work. Just special one. I'll swap faces, Jasmine. Yep, okay, so I'm just putting some of these around. We have the little moon bands. So I'm going to put one, whoop, there. Last time I did this in public, I did it at um, Art in the Garden, which was a CART event, CART is Community Arts. Uh, and they represent all the visual arts in Cardinia Shire. If you belong to a visual arts group or you're just a visual artist not belonging to a group, um, look up CART, C-A-R-T. They're on Facebook. And uh, there's some wonderful things. They're very supportive. It's only something like $15 to belong. It's great. And... Uh, they have a lot of fun events. Oh, that one's interesting, isn't um, it? So I don't know if the camera can see this, but this Probably is a not. heart. It's a plastic heart. It's plastic because it came from the cover that was around the tablecloth. <laughs> and that's what I mean. You just try and see what happens. Okay, do you want to put some of the pieces down? These I thought were really interesting. Um, we had a mouse problem a while ago, and I saved the paper that they chewed on because oh, washing my hands very no well no it's, been, it's fine it's been cleaned actually the paper and dried mm -hmm, hopefully now we've got threads i thought it would be interesting to see what happens if you run a thread around across several pieces that's just ordinary cotton excuse me sweetie cotton so we have this chain thing i have no idea what it's called what is this called Omar? Well, there's a chain. It's what you would put on the back of a coat behind the collar. And then if you were hanging your coat up, you would hang it by the chain. But I'm using it here because it's a chain. It should be interesting to see. Let's put it down here and we'll see what happens. Try to untwist it though. If the little elastic bands will make some nice round patterns. You really might need to just push these down a bit though, because elastic do. bands do like to yeah. go for their own shape. Well, when we add the ink in a minute the um, food dyed we're going to be pushing it down because they'll be nice and wet actually i think the next one i'll use is cof coffee um, what's this from it's a star ah i was wondering what would happen with that it's a just a lid from some vitamins and i'm thinking that the color might go in between where i've done the cutting it's not a particularly interesting shape but it's more an experiment to see what will happen and well, that's what we do as artists, we experiment. I've got this Let's put butterfly, some cotton down somewhere that, over there. This butterfly, which is cut out with a paper cutter. And so I'm going to see what I can do with How this. About that one, the paper clip. I've already put one of them down. Oh, okay. Cool. I have my own special one that I'm trying to do a design of the jacket. I do. Some of those envelopes are looking a bit plain. Do you want to put something down on those? Yes. I've got down a button, maybe. And we need some more foliage. Now, paper clip over here. There's some thread. So, um, this is like thin. I think it came from a little bit of yogurt, but it looks pretty flat. So I'm going to scrunch it up and then I'm scratch it and see if that will give it a design. I was thinking that one might need cutting. But you can see, because of the... So I've given it a reasonable It's scratch. not porous, so the ink's not like, it won't go into it. And what, what will happen? Well, we'll see what will happen. It could be interesting underneath. It might, res make, might make no difference at all. It might make a bit of difference. I suggest you put some colour down first. Okay, um, so I'm going to try the yellow food colour. Why don't you do that? That's a good so idea. This is the yellow one. I'm going to send her a couple of dots. Yep. Onto it. One, two, three. Just put that with it. We need some more leaves. So I just did a couple of drops of yellow. 
I'm using my glove hand to spread it out, of course. Ah, as I spread it out, I'm gonna. Here we go. So. These are weeds that I picked. Not too sure what they are. Maybe it's lucerne or something. Um, just, whoops, that's right. We've got the heart there, so we don't want to put it on top of that. The thing with using Cleons is you have to be very careful of where you put it. Who cares, because you can't find them after. Press it down with your fingers. If you've got a spine like this has on one side and the other side smooth, put the smooth side down. We need to put some more paper on top of that, I think, to weigh it down, Jess. Oh, you could use this piece of paper if you like. We put the three leaf clover somewhere. Oh, it fell, so I guess it's going to go there now. And when you, oh, you've got one bare hand. I actually like using bare hands, but your hands do get stained. Excuse me, your I do not really mind if my hands get stained, though. We could also put the plastic sleeve down if you want to. Where's that? That's a second ago. I wonder how this would go with tissue paper too. I'm not sure. I really have just. It would be very hard to manage because carefully you don't trip on the floor. I already fold it inside out. Oh, good. Good thinking. So when you take off the gloves, I usually just take them off normally. But since I covered in tea and dye and everything, I don't want that getting it all over the carpet. I'm just. So I take it off a bit and then I grab the fingers with my fingers and the glove, and I just fold it off and pull it off, and so it's basically like a little bag. Good. Okay, I'm going to, oh, now, if you've got an old yogurt tub or something you can use for this. I made up some very strong coffee in here. The, I heated it in the microwave so the jar's a funny shape. Is that why it's like that? Yeah. Now I need something to dab this with. A brush. A brush? You got a brush there? Yes, see? Uh, you could do that. Don't hold that over the floor while you're flapping it, please. <laughs> Not with red on it. So I'm trying to see if anything will come off this one. Just go this one here. And you can see the coffee's much darker. Let's go around the edge of the heart too while we're at it. You can choose a colour. Do you want to do your yellow food dye on some of the others? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna get my brush back. Well this is a different brush, but it's still a brush, so I'm gonna use it. And I'm actually gonna see if what it would look like with some red food dye. So we have a small amount of it here, but I don't think we have enough. So what I'm doing is I'm just tilting the food dye on the side. And, I'm just and holding it firm. <laughs> yeah, and I'm dipping the brush in. Oh, actually, you know what? Sorry, I'll move this out of there so we can get some colour on that. So Jazz, I'm... be very careful. That one's splashing a long way. Put it closer to the paper. Hold it, maybe something behind it so we don't splash the carpet. Red so on the carpet I'm would not go be good. Grab that special container thing, magic. <laughs> I'm also a bit nervous because you have left that sitting on the table without a lid on it. Sorry. <laughs> if that's got spilled, I could not help. Okay. Can I just dip that in red right. again? Yes, please. Yeah. And if you get a bit of spillage between the different ones, don't worry too much. I think the toothbrush might well, work better. Where is the toothbrush? There she is. Yes, I really try to do it So yeah, um, I'm I've done some all of these in here and soak so we can get a bit more space. If you've got food dye on your hands, you'll find that it will... Actually, I'm going to see what happens if we put them all down at once. Mostly because I need the space over there to reach the things. You've got the toothbrush? So I've got this toothbrush. Oh, I'm I've... so nervous about this one. Hold it closer to... That was good. Not too much with it because otherwise you'll just have lots of spots. Okay. Let's get some more leaves.
So to press leaves, if you do want to do that, I just use a pile of books or paper or a heavy box, anything at all that puts some weight on it. And then you can just forget about it. And this is why you use gloves. <laughs> oh, jazz. That's do you right. want to, I think the next job for you then will be with the uh, paper and you can get some of that blue food colouring off into the uh, tub of tea and, and off your skin. I'm going to push these. Alternatively, you could just go to the bathroom and wash your hands. I'll have a shower after this anyway. Yeah. I'm going to definitely be washing this off. I was going to put all the three leaf clover on the one thing and then put the four leaf clover in with it. But I'd need to find those and I've got them sort of mixed up with everything. The tea smells very good. What sort of tea is this? Um, I think it's one Tom brought over from England actually. So. Does the type of tea matter? No, not at all. Um, in fact, if you don't like the taste of the tea, if my mum's got one that she said, oh, I wish I hadn't bought that. Perfect for this. Uh, if it's children doing this, yep. Um, do ask first before you use the things, especially the old towel you're going to use. And the food dye. And the food dye and where you're doing it. Um, and then... And definitely Let me help you with that now. I'm going to get you the tea towel to wash your hands, dry your hands, or do you want the sponge first? I don't really mind. Okay, just don't go near the furniture. Excuse me, can I use the take the paper out? Got it? So sorry. Yep, excellent. So also with the tea towel, use an old one because you do not want like anything that you don't want on it. Want. I forgot how much um now I've just put dye, dye on top of the plastic sheet, which doesn't matter because I'm going to be putting some more paper on top of it and that will pick up the dye very nicely. Now how do we go with this? Needs a bit more tea. Do we have some more tea there, Jazz? I can quickly go for some hot water. No, no, don't make more. Is there more in the pot? The brown one? Yes, I'd say so, by the way. <laughs> you have. Thank you. So if you can't move the papers around, there's probably not enough liquid in there. You can see it's coming out. It's very dark. You wouldn't drink it like this, probably. Well, I wouldn't. I don't like my tea weak, but not this strong. Now, before I wash, um, well, before I get my hands dirty again, do you need any of these cards to be shown? Because we've shown this one. Why don't you show them anyway? What have we got? Yeah, okay. So we have the one that well, we showed before, the A part cover. Yeah, so that's the project that I'm doing for um, COVID-19 to make a map, a game based on the map of Cardinia Shire in isolation. We also have the Southeastern Contemporary Artwork. That's CCAN, where I was going to have my art exhibition, but it's a fantastic art group. They have their own web page too, and find them on Facebook. They have lots of interesting things during uh, our isolation days. There's a lot of art out there to find at the moment. Do you notice this is dry, even though it's been in the tub, because I put several in together, that's what happens. We also have Lazy Rivers... Uh, Lazy, Lazy River, River Writers. Writers, that's my writing group. That's a closed group. We've been together for 20 years now. Would um, you like this card to be shown? What's the next one? Oh, that's where you can find me on, <laughs> on social media. You can follow me. Excuse me? I didn't know that was an email you didn't want to oh, No, 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 no. Um, we also have Mind Drawing. Mind Drawing is my website. Seacan, as you were told about before. Yeah. And there are lots and lots of art groups in Cardinia Shire. Um, not just art, but there are music groups and things too. So whatever you're interested in, go to Facebook or whatever, look in the search bar and type in the town you're looking for, where you live or whatever, or the, the Cardinia Shire, and then whatever the uh, interest group is. I'm guessing this stands for something, so CART. Yes, C for Cardinia, art. That was the group that I was talking about. That supports all the different arts. That's what I want to do. Where's that toothbrush? That's what I was looking for. Is that before. toothbrush? I'll give it to you. Thank you. I'll put my hand underneath. There we go. <laughs> we also have Mandela Mondays, which Mandela I've Mondays, yes. About on Facebook, where we do mandalas on Mondays. This is way too wet. Ah. And tomorrow's a Monday, so are we still doing Mandela Mondays? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
And so that, look at this over here. See, I love the way it forms with the water, wet on wet. Now, Amanda Mondays actually has a funny story as well. Does it? So we were going to do it just for a month. But <laughs> it has continued for a very long time. Yes, we're <laughs> at week 16 on Monday, tomorrow. Oh, well, no, not tomorrow for you. Um, Wednesday, so it'll be week 17. This is being launched on Wednesday. But there'll be a different artist the following week. But yes, when I take requests of what to make the mandalas out of, and there are recordings of past shows, so there's always plenty to look at there, and you can make your own mandala and post it in the group. And Mandala Mondays is live every Monday at three, three. o'clock. So, yeah. Um, we also have www.cardinia.vic.gov.au slash alive with creativity. That's the one that you're on now, and that's the one to keep coming back to every day. Uh, the council is not just doing um, art, they're doing works in all sorts of genres of the arts. Oh, come on, that you come. Yes, they're definitely sticking together a bit here. We yeah. need a few more plants. Just one more reminder of it, because why not? And also a lot more bigger, so a lot, well, a lot bigger, sorry, not a lot more bigger, but it's bigger, so it's easier to see. Okay, thanks, Jess. Yeah. Now you see this one, while it was sitting in the tub, it already started picking up that print from the paper that was next to it. Okay, now because we didn't look at what the time is, I'm going to keep going till I finish this, but we might sign off. It's 2.34. Yeah, well, I don't know when we started, so I'm not sure when to finish. But thank you for being here. Have fun with your art. And... You're saying bye, I'm going to keep going and you'll still be able to see what I'm doing. Um, can't believe I forgot to look at the clock again today. There are so many things when you're setting up. So for the other artists who are also taking part in this project, um, yeah, do remember to look at the clock. Uh, check that people can see everything you want them to see. What other tips do I have? Have fun, <laughs> experiment. This is all about experiment. That's not just for the other artists, that's for everybody here. Give it a go and see what comes out. Oh, hold on. Let's put a whole lot down. Yeah, a few more of these. I think I'm forgetting something else I was supposed to tell you. Okay, now as I said, we need to make sure things are sitting flat. Just give them a little press down with your fingers. Don't worry about that one, that one's plastic. And where you've got it overlapping, or where I've got it overlapping, take out the other pieces because you won't see them, the details of overlapping pieces. Sure, well, I've got plastic there. So, if you've got a little spray bottle with a fine spray, this would be a good time to use that. I'll try it with this one. We'll see how we go. Put it on and just to protect things. See, this is making quite a big spray, actually, isn't it? I don't want too much red. I think it would be overpowering. That's the other thing to think about when you're putting your colours out. Think about what you want the colour scheme to be. Where do you, what's the balance on it? This one's going to have a break across there where it's going to the white paper is white still because it didn't get wet. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put some the coffee in there because this is a much darker colour. So the paper will be stained a lot darker too. I do have one other tip for people making videos. Be aware of your posture because if you're leaning forward all the time as I am at the moment, it is, oops, can be quite hard on your back. I just tore the paper then. Yeah, so 
don't do what I do. Do as I said. When I said to put the pieces in one by one, that was excellent advice. If you don't, you will get torn paper like that. But again, don't stress if it happens, you can still use it. Oh, yeah, lots of paper and water in between. Sorry, dye in between. Turn that one over. So you see, just be very gentle, massage the paper a bit while it's in the tub and separate it again. And that way you get the colour in between all the layers. You get the lovely effects. It's quite nice when you are looking at the pages afterwards, once they've dried, to see pictures within them and then embellish those. I still wasn't wanting to separate. Yeah, so I've made it difficult for myself by putting them in together because I wanted to make the extra space. It's not really a shortcut, it just created problems. So think carefully about what you're doing. I'm letting this dribble over there because this is also a colour that's going to go onto the pages and it will show up some of the leaves nicely. I think we need a few more leaves actually. Let's put this over this bit. I have a book here that I was flattening things in. Oh, I've got that one too. It's quite nice. Another dry bit there. Let's put some more water on it. Or tea on it. Coffee tea now. Something thicker you can put in a big puddle, but the big puddles, I warn you, will take longer to dry. Because, yeah, it makes sense. It's, you know, a very wet thing. So you can dry things between an old pages of an old diary. Again, put the flat side down. What have I got up here? Some more up here. They overlap onto the cards a bit. Pages automatically open to where you've had them, had things in between. I'm not sure how that one will go. It's very pretty, but it's very delicate too. Let's just set it down here. Things that are pretty though, when they're um, in the flesh, so to speak, will quite often, if they're bulky, will take up too much space the ink to go around it. And you can probably see I'm getting ink on everything I'm touching at the moment, or not ink dye or uh, coffee. I want to put a bit more, I think. I'll grab the tea bag as a, a paintbrush instead. I quite like the tea bag as a brush to bring the colour across because, and now we can wet this one too, because you can squeeze it out. And if you accidentally get some tea on, that doesn't even matter either. Because the uh, little tea granules or pieces of leaf also add to the pattern. Where it's dry, you're not going to get any pattern at all. So do need to put some down. Particularly over things like a paper clip, that won't leave a mark at all unless I put some dye around it or tea around it. Don't want to overlap the leaves, so a bit of separation there. And again, if you've got too much water, that's not going to work for you either. So you may need to put another piece of paper on top to soak some of that up, or you could use the sponge if you wanted to. Oh. Add a 
do two together here. Yes, there's a lot coming out of that. Yeah, I really was a bit silly putting so many in at once. Which may not matter because it'll give you another effect, but at the same time, I'm not sure how I'll go separating the pages afterwards. I'm going to leave that with a wrinkle in it and you'll see what happens. It makes its own lines at the edges of the uh, raised part. Separate, come on. Handling the paper as delicately as I can because it is quite um, fragile when it's wet. Let's put you back in water. It might be easier to separate you there. Maybe. And as I said, I'm going to bind these together in a ooh, junk journal. Is that all? Because I just tore the paper. And there'll be folders, pockets that you can put things in. Anyway, you get the idea. Have fun with this at home. Well, I didn't really tell you what to do with it afterwards. Leave it to dry. When it's just damp, you can still handle it. Not when it's wet. It will tear and won't form the lovely shapes that you want. So don't do it while it's wet. Ah, here's some more plants to about. Oh, I've got a big leaf there. Now that one's actually not going to, well, it will sort of make a pattern. Probably not quite what I'm after. We'll put it down anyway. It's ready and it's flat. And have a look in your garden, see what weeds you've got, what flowers you've got. I'm just letting these fall where they may. So when it's flat, you might also find that your pages will become a bit uh, bubbly. So you can put them underneath a pile of books to flatten. I'd suggest, oh, here we go. Here's some of the weeds I collected. I would suggest putting, um, I was going to say, oh, just having trouble with that one. I would suggest putting uh, a sheet of paper in between the different coloured of dyed pages, so a dry sheet of paper, so it can absorb some of the moisture. Just pat, pat it down. See, that was a nice dandelion leaf. Anything with a bit of shape. And you can put them down randomly, or you can put them down bit of a pattern if you want to. Another one down there. Oh, I think a little bit more there. This job can take, job, art, can take as long as you want it to take. Oh, actually that's really pretty that one. I think that would look lovely. Oh, let's put it on the other side of that. There we go. Get my tea bag and the coffee. I'll give it a bit of coffee stain over the top. Patch your things down. Oh, a couple of flowers there. I'm not sure how the flowers will go because it would be a very big blank white space there, or lighter space. So when you've taken a uh, made your artwork. If you like your pieces, post it on social media and tag Cardinia Shire, Cardinia Shire Council, Arts at Cardinia. Let's just tag Alive with Creativity. If everybody tags Alive with Creativity, 
then we'll be able to find the results. Now this one was a piece of art already on there that someone had been playing with. I just added some tea stain to it. <laughs> you can do that if you want to make something look older too, which in a junk journal is quite a nice look. I'm getting through the paper. And that's, ah, now this, we've got to the Ikea paper that was big. And I've got it like that. I'll leave it folded, I think. Maybe I'll put something in between. Um, I figured if I'm making a big journal, that will fit very nicely in there. Oh, I've got more, more leaves. Another one down there. So the backs of, if you're using a notepad, the back of the notepad is always um, handy for other things. This time I've used it with the to press the flowers in between. So you can put flowers and leaves directly into a book. That's a four leaf clover. Um, or you can put it uh, between two pieces of card. That one's a violet leaf. Oh, I like this one. That's a very nice leaf. I think I collected that one at Art in the Garden when I made my other papers. So if you find interesting looking leaves but you haven't got time to use them now, you can definitely set them aside for later. Oh, I've got another four leaf clover there. It's gonna be a case of find the three leaf clover, I think, at this rate. Come on. This is why I use four leaf clovers as my trademark and I always hide a four leaf clover in my mind drawings. Mind drawings are very fine lined drawings. I make them with a 0.1 pen, drafting pen, and I don't colour them in because I want people to find their own pictures in them. As soon as I colour it says, look at this side of the line, whereas the paint drawings usually have more than one way of being seen. In fact, I've, there's one particular drawing I have. I find nine out of ten people I ask what they saw first, nine out of 10 say one thing, and one out of 10 will say something completely different and may not even see what the nine out of 10 see. And that to me is really interesting, especially as the next thing that people do is ask them, I'll show the person next to them, hey, no, no, this is what I saw. And they want to be understood. And I think this is the foundation of communication. That, oh, that one's sitting up too much. The foundation of communication, we need to make sure we're actually talking about the same thing to start off with when we're talking to other people. I haven't used green at all, have I? Oh, yes, I have. Or did we make the green out of the blue? Maybe. I'm going to put the tea bag in the coffee and tea. Just put a little bit of green onto it. And then when I do this, we'll get that darker, more natural colour. Again, pressing down to make sure there's contact between the paper and the pieces that are making the shapes. Oh, they're all together. They're not going to make a very good shape. Come on, move side there. This up here needs more. So it's going to be nice and wet now. When it's dried, we'll have some lovely definition of the shapes on top. Spread that around. You can go over there. Especially where I haven't soaked the paper properly first, I have to add more water now or more tea and dye to get the colour, um, to get the definition because it's way too dry. the things down. So thank you once again for being here. Keep making. I think the time must be pretty close to up now and I'll leave it at that although I'm going to keep going and see you around and I look forward to seeing your artwork.
have fun making art. Bye, everyone.